right? So that was a very quick overview of the different challenges in the built environment. And the MSC civil engineering program is one that is able to help us to upgrade our skill set to get ready for this transformation of the built environment. The program will allow us to acquire advanced and in-depth knowledge across the different sub-disciplines of civil engineering, and also to integrate the knowledge and skills of emerging technologies. So how do we do that? To meet the different challenges in each sub-discipline in civil engineering, we have in this program seven specially curated specializations. For instance, we have a specialization in structural engineering, a specialization in geotechnical engineering, in infrastructure digitalization and management, transport and urban mobility, digital water and climate, ocean infrastructure and renewables. And last but not least, we also have a specialization in climate change adaptation for sustainable urban development. The MSc Civil Engineering program is structured as follows. The student will have to take 20 modular credits. So this will be uh, core modules in his or her specialization. And on top of that, the student has to take additional 20 modular credits. This can be any modules which are listed under the MSc Civil Engineering program. So in total, the student will have to complete 40 modular credits to obtain the MSc Civil Engineering degree. Okay, with that as a very quick overview, let's watch a very short video clip on the details, on some details of this MSc Civil Engineering program. Welcome to the Master of Science in Civil Engineering program at NUS. We offer students a wide selection of modules across multiple specializations, such as structural engineering, Geotechnical Engineering Transport and Urban Mobility Ocean Infrastructure and Renewables Infrastructure Digitalization and Management Digital Water and Climate These specializations have been designed to meet the needs of every civil engineer. Whether you are working on a building, or on a land reclamation, or planning the next transport link, there is a specialization that will greatly advance your existing expertise. NUS Civil and Environmental Engineering Department is consistently ranked as one of the best in the world. Our MSc Civil Engineering program has the most updated course offerings to suit your professional needs. Join our community of aspiring learners and register for the program today. Okay, I hope this uh, clip shows a very uh, broad overview of the MSc Civil Engineering program. Now that we have a broad overview of the program, I will now highlight some interesting topics which will be covered in the MSc Civil Engineering program. So for instance, we have topics in circular concrete where we learn the, on the use of recycled materials, incorporate them into this uh, concrete mix design and to cast the concrete into different uh, functions so that uh, we can do a life cycle assessment of this type of uh, circular concrete. We also have topics in modular constructions, where again, the emphasis is on PPVC, prefabricated, pre-finished volumetric construction methods, whether it is a, a precast concrete structure or steel concrete composite structures, or even mass engineered timber structures. So the use of these PPVC construction methods, again, is to achieve rapid uh, construction and to achieve uh, significant cost savings at the end of the construction period. To be proficient in the design of the suitable connections, we also be learning about the use of advanced final elements modeling and analysis softwares. Now in geotechnical investigations, we will be looking at the selections and also on the placement of ground instrumentations and sensors. 
so as to track the movement of possible uh, track possible soil movements. Now, also in regions where we have poor soil conditions, we'll be looking at advanced uh, ground improvement methods and also the construction of deep uh, foundations. In geotechnical technology, we'll be looking at the design and construction of deep underground space so as to utilize the underground space and of course, to be to learn to be proficient in computational geomechanics, so as to make use of existing advanced uh, software to facilitate the design of such um, uh, advanced uh, buildings. In water systems, we'll be learning to understand, to model, and also to predict climate change impacts on the water system in an urban infrastructure setting, so as to come up with the suitable flood protection system to avoid this type of situation. Now also in digital water engineering, we'll be looking uh, at the use of sensors and control technologies to collect the relevant data. And also with this uh, huge amount of data, uh, to the possible use of AI to, to understand and also to predict future uh, weather conditions. In autonomous mobility, we are now currently looking at the, the revolutions where there's a growing demand on the use of electric vehicles. And of course, correspondingly on the design of the supporting infrastructure, for example, the charging system, as well as the interplay between the, the supply and demand analysis corresponding to the energy markets. Extrapolating this a little bit further, we also now are trying to understand the next revolution with the increased use of self-driving vehicles and again on the need to come up with the suitable intelligent transportation system and of course to understand and to be proficient in the modeling of travel behavior and, and the transport planning and with the analysis here to design and develop the necessary support uh, supporting infrastructure in a sustainable manner so I hope I've given you a very quick overview of the challenges and the opportunities facing the uh, uh, engineer in the built environment today and how the MSC Civil Engineering Program can help us to tap onto these opportunities. So more information can be obtained from our website by scanning this QR code. Of course, uh, if any questions, uh, please feel free to join an email to Ms. Sangita at this email address here. And also, if you have any questions uh, uh, at this point in time, feel free to type them into the chat uh, function of this Zoom session. So with that, that will end the first segment of this session on the broad overview on the MSc Civil Engineering Program. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat function of the Zoom session. I'll now proceed to the next segment which is to highlight two new specializations in the MSc Civil Engineering Program. Now we have a new specialization in uh, climate change adaptation for sustainable urban development and the uh, program uh, director, uh, Professor Vladan. Unfortunately, he is unable to join us uh, in person today, but he has done a pre-recording to give a quick overview of this uh, climate change uh, specialization. So we will, uh, now play this a uh, pre-recorded uh, overview of this new specialization. Um, this master science program um, is set in the context of Singapore's commitment to develop a, a plan of hundred billion dollars, hundred billion dollars plan to survive a climate change adaptation. Now, this is an amazing commitment of the government to make sure that we stay safe uh, under the uh, growing threats posed by uh, rising sea levels, changes in precipitation, and in general, climate change. Also, we have to consider more immediate threats and threats that are related to our food supply. Um, as we witness on a daily basis, uh, the, the, the supply chains are being disrupted uh, and the country is committed to producing 30% of the food from local sources, from the local sources by 2030. Now in that background, we have conceived uh, 
specialization within master of science program in civil engineering uh, that deals with a comprehensive set of issues related to climate change adaptation. Of course, this involves air and water quality, food security, decision making under deep uncertainty, circular engineering and coastal and inland water management. These are the five key aspects that are being underpinned by Capstone Project. Now, let me tell you a few more words about this. Now, at a glance, the specialization is defined by 20 modular credit points, which means that you would need to take five modules, each of which taking four MCs, four modular credit points. The first one of them that I would like to highlight is coastal processes and protection. After all, we are island, we live on the island and we are threatened by rising sea levels. Hence, the coastal processes, currents, tides, surges, are fundamental to understanding how we are threatened. At the same time, we also need to assess uh, methods and methodologies for protecting ourselves from this. Now, this particular module will be addressing those issues. However, engineering solutions and engineering processes are not everything. So we need to also consider and, and seek a help from nature inspired solutions. And in that sense, we're having this module called eco hydrology and nature based solutions for causal protection. Now, eco hydrology deals with inland water systems, whereas nature based solutions for cost protection deal with the coastal processes, similar to cost processes and protection and eco hydrology and nature based solutions. These modules are consisted in two halves, two mini modules, and then you would in each half focus on one of the topics. In case of 5317, part A will be looking at eco hydrology, inland water systems, and part B will focus on nature based solutions. Decision making for climate adaptation, CE 5318 is a, a course code. Uh, we are obviously investing in infrastructure that should last for another 30, 40, 50 years. And the only thing that we know that we are certain about is that future climate and future weather conditions will be highly uncertain. Yet, financial commitments need to be made today. So a decision has to be made today to support a future infrastructure development or infrastructure development that will operate under uncertain conditions. Hence, the decision making, a policy making under the deep uncertainties is very different than it used to be for a more traditional engineering discipline. So here in this topic, we will be introducing subjects like real options analysis, tipping points, etc that will bring a completely new perspective in this for, to decision making. On a more sustainable notion, circuit economy for sustainable development will deal with uh, an, uh, uh, the fact that we are not here just to use material once and forget about this. Circuit economy considers reuse and considers using material that were once considered waste to use them for a new purposes and give it a new lease of life, if you will. Circular economy will be looking at, at, at global practices, best practices around the world, but bringing them and adapting them for local conditions. Finally, a capstone project. Now this is a terribly important interdisciplinary project. Obviously, um, climate adaptation is a, is a complex issue consisting of many various aspects. And in this case, you will be having a chance to deal with a practical problems. And moreover, you will be supervised not only by professors, not only by academics, but also by practicing engineers. So you will have an exposure to real world problems that Singapore is facing and trying to solve them. Now, these four requirements are the requirements that require, that define this specialization.
In addition to these 20 MCs, you will need to select 20 additional module credit points, and we call those technical electives, and you can select them very broadly. So we've taken liberty to curate a number of modules that may be of interest, may be relevant to some of you. Climate science medication adaptation offers two modules. The one is open channel hydraulics and the other one is climate science for engineers. Digital and resilient urban planning technology offers module called hydroinformatics. And smart and livable cities deals with water resources for smart and livable cities and water resources modeling for urban catchments. Other technical electives deal with air quality, air pollution, aerosol science, solid and wastewater technology, solid waste and wastewater, so toxic, sludge, water reclamation, water treatment processes, and of course, renewable energy. And so ocean waves, analysis of floating ocean infrastructure, fixed wind uh, 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 turbine infrastructure and so forth. In summary, a very exciting modules giving a phenomenal career prospects for all those who take it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me Ladan Babovich or Ms. Cecilia Devishanti. Uh, emails are provided here. More details you can find are on the program webpage. But perhaps, and uh, most importantly, feel free to reach, reach out to us. We will be happy to talk to you, uh, find a way of addressing your interests and needs, and making sure that this program is really something that suits well. I'm looking forward to seeing you, meeting you in person at uh, next academic year. And until then, goodbye. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Vladan, the coordinator for the climate change specialization. So with that, we are now move on to the next segment, which is on another new specialization on the uh, these are uh, ocean infrastructures and renewables, and this will be presented by this uh, Dr. Paul Ong, again the the coordinator for this new specialization. Thank you, Leonghen. Let me share my screen. So I hope you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Now the slides. Uh, so I uh, uh, thank you for joining this uh, presentation. I'm just going to cover one new specialization in our Master of Science Civil Engineering, which is called Ocean Infrastructures and Renewable. So why renewables? We're thinking why we're we looking at renewables. Renewables are really important to all of us right now because in the future, we're going to rely less and less on hydrocarbons, right? Oil and gas will start to phase out and over time, wind, solar will take over as a huge proportion of our energy mix. Right, so we're all looking at renewables. So as a civil engineer, this is very important to you because this is going to impact you for many years to come. So we're going to look at wind and renewables. But wind and renewables require large surface areas. Solar farms require a huge surface area to gather the sun energy. Wind requires a long distance for the fetch, to, to, for the wind speed to get, get the speed. So where to put all this wind and solar energy from? We tap it on the sea, right? So you have floating solar in Singapore. Putting solar panels near the sea allows some of the cooling effect, make the solar panels more effective. Of course, wind turbine, the best place to put wind turbine is again offshore, right? You don't have buildings to block the wind and the wind has enough fetched to get up to speed. Other applications for ocean infrastructures today are ocean farm. As you know, there's huge demand for fish. Population is growing. Even Singapore, we have to have several reliant on, on food. Uh, therefore, fish farming is a big business in the many years to come. Last of all, floating buildings, right? So one example is a floating pavilion. This is very new. In Singapore, we have a marina float, but in places like Rotterdam in Holland, they have a lot of floating houses. People live on the sea. It's a fact of life. So why ocean, ocean infrastructures? Because we need those infrastructures to support our, our need, our demand for our renewables. So what would you learn? Uh, the modules are very simply laid out for you. In the very beginning, you have introduction modules, just the introduction of the overall, the view of ocean infrastructures renewable. 
Then you go into more detailed stuff like wave, wind, environmental loads, which is the foundations for all offshore structures, including coastal structures. And then you'll break into floating structures, fixed structures, mooring cables, which is actually for station keeping, and of course, offshore foundations. So these are the different elements in offshore structures that you have to learn. Once you've learned all this, then you work on a capstone project, which is the design of a floating solar farm, right? That's basically to apply everything you've learned into one capstone project. So if you look at a capstone project of floating solar farm, this is a typical schematic. You will be doing this in four simple tasks. The first task is to preliminary sizing, calculate all the environmental loads that this solar farm is gonna experience. Then you design the floating modules, right? Those modules that support the solar panels, you need to design them, right? What kind of materials may be, what kind of sizes they are. And then you design the mooring system cable, right? You, see, you need, all this needs to be tied down on the seabed. Otherwise, if the wave come, the whole solar farm will just move over to another location. So you need to tie them down. You need to have a mooring system to tie them down. Last of all, you design the foundations, very simple concrete foundations that you have to design. So when you take the specialization, you can design a floating solar farm from scratch. You learn everything from the environmental loads to the floating modules, to the cable systems, and eventually to the foundations. What support would you receive? So you're not only taught by people like us, lecturers, but we do have people from the, from the ministry to, to support you. One of them is we have a young professor, uh, Professor Azi Merchant, who is from Capo Marine and Deepwater, which is part of Capo Offshore Marine, right? He has more than 25 years of experience, uh, huge experience in terms of offshore, designed all kinds of structures before. Uh, he has also written a lot of papers. So he will be teaching some of the modules and you get a lot of uh, kind of experience from him. And of course, we are also supported by TCOMS, which is a deep water basin research lab in NUS and service and the Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore is the forefront for floating solar or solar energy. So they have done a lot of work. You've probably seen some of the work uh, in Woodlands, uh, in Tonga Reservoir, right? So we are supported by them and we have close links with them. We could organize uh, site visits to Capo, site visits to TCOMS, and you'll be taught by some of the lecturers. So last of all, where to find more information, of course, you can always email me. It's very easy to remember. It's C-E-E-O-P-A. Uh, or you can always follow us on our LinkedIn site. It's NUS Core. Just go to LinkedIn and search for NUS Core and you will find out all the latest details and uh, news about our course. Right, thank you much. I pass back to you, Long Yen. Hi, thanks, uh, Paul. Thank you. Okay, again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, of course, you can send us an email or... At this point in time, you can also you know, type your questions in the chat function, or you can also address your questions uh, directly to uh, me or Dr. Du. Right, okay, uh, we will now move on to the next segment of this uh, session, which is on some uh, sharing session by our uh, students in the MSc Civil Engineering program. So I have uh, here two video clips from two uh, students. The first student is uh, no, uh, doing this uh, MSc program uh, with a specialization in uh, geotechnical engineering. Okay, so I'm going to share the video. Uh, give me one a while. Yes, you can see the video. Okay, great. Let me start. I graduated with a bachelor degree in civil engineering from NUS and have been working as a civil engineer for the past two years. While the undergraduate program provided a strong foundation to kickstart my career as a civil engineer, I do encounter some intricate engineering problems that can be challenging. Hence, I decided to enroll in the NUS Masters of Science Civil Engineering program to bridge any knowledge gaps and further enrich my technical knowledge. Since then, I've already applied many concepts learned in my class to my work. Through the module of underground space, I've applied the advanced concepts on tunneling design to an MRT project that I was working on. Other modules like earth retaining structures and ground improvement have project components which are built upon past construction projects in Singapore. 
These exercises have no doubt provided the much needed training to further my professional growth. As Singapore plans for underground development due to land scarcity, I have decided to specialise in geotechnical engineering so that I can be well prepared to take on such projects in the future. I'm also glad that the MSc programme provides the flexibility to take modules beyond the field of specialisation. This has introduced me to the latest technologies and know-hows in the built environment and I'm in a better position to plan and chart my career path. Okay, that was the first uh, video clip from our alumni, uh, specialization in geotechnical engineering. I'm going to play the second video clip from another student who has done a specialization in infrastructure digitalization and management. Okay, let me share the screen. So before I start, uh, can you see the, the screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Okay, thank you. I find the teaching in NUS to be very interactive and engaging. As a student working towards a specialization in infrastructure digitalization and management, I have learned about emerging technologies for the built environment, such as virtual reality, augmented reality, and the Internet of Things, etc., with practical, hands-on experience. For example, I had uh, explored a building in a virtual environment in order to perform defect management. In another occasion, I had used a 3D scanner as well to construct 3D models of selected spots in NUS campus. I also had the opportunity to work on a research project looking into the quality issues in PPVC construction, where I have learned data analysis tools and languages. Through the um, experimental learning process, I have a better appreciation on the use of advanced technologies and how they may help to shape the built environment in the future. Sorry. Okay, so that was the sharing by the second alumni. Okay, at this point in time, again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, type your questions in the text, uh, chat function. Now, uh, last but not least, since we have a little bit of time, I'm going to share a third video, which is on the new uh, uh, a module in the MSc Civil Engineering program. So in the MSc Civil Engineering program, now we are going to have a capstone project for each specialization. Okay, sorry, the session will end in five minutes. Okay, in that case, uh, maybe uh, Hong Jian, would you like to answer the, some questions first? I think. Okay, uh, thank you, Lun Hing. I think we received one question from uh, Kanan. Uh, are there any pre-qualifications required to apply MSc Civil Engineering? For example, the English uh, test, graduate certificate program, or modular credits? Uh, for English test, we do have requirements. Um, if your native speak, if you are not English uh, native speaker, or if your education uh, you have received is not English speaking uh, institute, we need you need to um, show the result and pass the required from um, AUS uh, requirement. Or graduate certification program is depends on your background. If you already have a degree. Um, uh, you don't have to have this uh, graduate certificate program. But if you uh, have obtained a graduate certificate from AUS, I think uh, that is uh, eligible. Um, Sangita, you have anything to add on regarding this question? Uh, no, I think uh, you've explained clearly. Okay, um, Kanan, do you have any follow-up questions? Feel free to, uh, to type your questions or you can just turn on your mic and let us know your question for your further questions. Hello, hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes, can I hear you? Yeah, yeah, good into all. Uh, actually, actually, I have a degree, uh, civil engineering de degree from India. Currently, I'm working in Singapore for, uh, <laughs> since, sorry, for, for, for 10 years. So uh, I want to study in part-time in MSc. For this, uh, what, 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 what are the pre-qualifications pre for that? 
for studying part time uh, what are the pre qualifications are required for me okay sangeeta you can answer the question yes yeah okay uh, there is no uh, pre qualifications if you have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering you are welcome to apply and if you have related work experience uh, it's a bonus as well so you can apply as for the ILETS uh, if your degree is from an indian university uh, you will not require to submit ILETS then okay. uh, what about a gc program graduate certificate program is this mandatory to enter msc or it's not required gc program uh, grad cert is not a mandatory requirement uh, like i said if you have a bachelor's degree you can apply directly to a uh, masters in civil engineering uh, but if you prefer to um, take graduate certificate first before coming into masters you can also do that so it's uh, it's what the applicant or student wants to do how they want to plan their studies okay okay thank you uh so i think there's another question oh uh um, former uh, degrees from china okay if your former degree is from china yes you will be required to submit uh, TOEFL or IELTS uh the BCA uh, diploma is not your formal degree so that will not be taken into account as in for the english test requirement okay hongshan i uh, hope uh, sangita has answered your question do you have any question to follow up regarding the english test Okay, you can leave your comments to the chat box. Okay, noted. Okay, um, any more questions from the rest? You want to answer your questions? While we're waiting for new questions, actually I received a few questions uh, to me directly. Uh, I can um, share my slide so that everyone can see the question very clearly. Okay, I think this is a, a question. Uh, some international students have interest to know uh, is English test required? I think we have answered the question very clearly, uh, including the, um, the diploma uh, from BCA. You still need the English test to result. We also have received some uh, questions. Uh, let's say, what is the duration of the study? Um, for full-time students, okay, it's maximally four years, for it. Uh, minimally two semesters and maximum four semesters. For part-time students, um, the duration of the study is minimum four semesters and maximally uh, eight sem semesters. Uh, we receive another question from Kanan. Uh, what is the next intake and when shall we start to apply? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so the next uh, intake is January uh, next year, 2023. Uh, so you can apply this uh, MSC civil program uh, between this uh, window. So hopefully this is uh, clear and you can um, uh, apply this uh, online through this uh, graduate admission system. Okay, you can scan the QR code to get more information about the next intake. Uh, we receive another question from uh, in the chat box. I graduated from Bachelor of Engineering in Myanmar University and taught in English as the medium of uh, instruction. Should I need to show uh, English test, else? Uh, yes, for degrees from uh, Myanmar universities, you will be required to submit your IELTS. Yeah, so even the, even the candidate that also has mentioned uh, uh, is taught in English, right? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Um, hopefully, you have, uh, your question has been cleared. Okay, the next question, how much does it cost for a semester? Okay, so this slide can answer your question. Uh, you can see actually this uh, MSc uh, program uh, is uh, charged by the program fee. Uh, so for this uh, full program fee, 40 MCs for the academic year 22-23 is uh, 46,000 including GST. So it's not charged based on semester, it's based on the whole program. Another question, would the cost be in US dollars? Uh, no, the cost is in Singapore dollars. Okay, Singapore dollars, 46,000. Yeah, so as we have mentioned, if you want to get to know more information about the program requirement and the information about application, uh, you can always refer to our department website. Uh, there are a lot of information there. Um, but uh, since you are here already, feel free to ask us any questions in your mind. We are uh, very willing to uh, answer them. 
Yeah, you can leave the questions to the chat box. Okay, um, can I ask one more question? Is there any entrance exam? Um, there's no entrance exam, Kana. Um, so if the application is based on your documents and your background, so you can see the requirement from the website. Okay, I think we have time for one last question before the session is uh, closed. Uh, some students ask us, um, can more than one specialization be chosen? Um, the answer is no. You can only choose one specialization. For example, you have specialization in structural engineering or specialization in geo, but cannot do both at the same time. Or oh, there is another question. Uh, is there any subsidy for Singapore citizen or PR? Um, okay, the answer is for the academic year 22 and 23, all Singapore citizens or Singapore PR will receive a free rebate upon uh, acceptance into the MSc civil engineering program. Um, the rebate quantum will be based on the merit. Okay, so this is the short answer to this uh, question. Okay, um, another question in the chat box. My Bachelor of Engineering degree has eight years long. Is it valid for applied MSc program? Um, so it means uh, uh, your bachelor degree was obtained eight years ago. It, uh, am I right to say that? Um, is it valid for applied MSc program? Yes, it's uh, valid. Uh, I think the last question, is there any scholarship for international students? Uh, actually, the answer is uh, no, it's not offered under this program. Yeah, so thank you, SS, for the question. Okay, so, so I, I, I think uh, we have to wrap up the session already. So uh, again, thank you everyone for joining and uh, I hope this is uh, informative for you. And uh, if uh, you have any further questions, uh, please uh, drop us an email on our, uh, the email address can be found on our, uh, our website. And uh, okay, so I hope to see many of you in NUS in the next academic year. Okay, so please keep the questions coming and uh, sending your applications to this uh, uh, MSc Civil Engineering program. Okay, so that's all for the session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks to all.